Hey, what's up, everybody? GP13 here, uh, doing a solo pod this time, and it's really just about making money betting. So, I've been wanting to do this for a while. The you know, I think a lot of people see betting as one thing, whether it be you know odds jam or modeling or uh, getting sportsbook bonuses. But I think that the best bettors combine everything into have have all aspects of betting feed into their main strategy, whatever it is. Now they could be an originator, but it doesn't mean they're not looking at the markets, not taking advantage of, you know, VIP plays somewhere. And, you know, you you have to be flexible because you're gonna have to evolve in a market that's constantly evolving. But what you what I want to teach today is how the five what I see as the five main income streams of a modern sports better and how you should be utilizing each one, which one should you start with, and how do you build upon those skills to have a complete sports betting strategy. So let's, and also if you're listening to this on uh, the podcast, I'm doing this on YouTube with some visuals. So if you ever have a time to switch over to the YouTube channel, uh, this would be a good time. So yeah, let's go, let's get going. So this is kind of, so this is actually in the same format. We'll do like a GP Academy live class. So if you like what you're seeing here, this is kind of like a watered down version of what we have uh, at GP Academy. So please sign up or give, give us a try. Uh, feel free to DM me and you know ask questions you have about the Academy, but it's been a great experience so far. We're doing a ton of stuff on originating, which I think is unique to us, like in-depth live walkthroughs of me building sports betting models. Uh, you know, yeah, give us a try. If it's if you're serious about betting, it's really worth it. Okay. Income stream one is bonuses. Now you hear me, if you've been a listener of this podcast for a while, you've heard me talk about um about bonuses and especially how they fit into what I believe like winning sports betting is a choice. I really believe this, and it's because of bonuses. Bonuses um, are absolute zero skill way to win sports betting. So you have sports books that give you a hundred percent deposit match. If you wanted to, you could take you know two sports book deposit matches, bet them on the same game on different outcomes, and you win money. Now, would it be the most optimal way to use your bonus? Probably not, but it would guarantee that you can win money, and it is a zero. Zero, you need zero brain cells to figure that to figure that out. So this is why I say winning sports betting is a choice. Because if your true goal was to win and only to win, and you couldn't win by doing any of the next four strategies, you would just go in and you would use deposit bonuses, you'd bet the free plays, you bet the promos, and you would win. And that's easy to understand. I think that a lot of people get bored, they want to seem smart, they have ego tied up in it, so they'll try and win against the sports book, and that's what the sports book's counting on, is essentially to draw an inexperienced better to the platform with bonuses, and then have them start betting their opinions when they're not skilled enough to do so. So that's when when platforms say like we want to get users to sign up, it's like we want to get inexperienced users to sign up. That, that's really what it is. They don't want, you know, me or like a professional better to sign up through bonuses. We're not who the bonuses are targeted at. Um, so what they're trying to do here is get an inexperienced user to win a little and then to get into the, to download the app, to have the habit of betting and then to lose. So step one, this should be your, if you don't know how to win, this should be the only tool in your arsenal. Win. Win first, learn later, in my opinion. Now, you know, how, how does this help you learn? Well, it, it gets you familiar with the sports betting interface. You know, you understand. You'll just, through synthesis, understand kind of lines and line movements, odds, um, what different bets are offered, right? And then you can learn about optimizing bonuses, which will teach you certain math that can be used for top-down betting. So what you need to do, if you are... A beginning sports better. If you're like, oh, I just kind of go on and, and bet on whatever I watch on TV, but I want to win. You can stop this video now. Stop betting on what you watch on TV. 
start to figure out what bonuses are available to you and go win some money. Build the habit of winning first. Don't build the habit of betting first. Win right off the bat. That's my best, like that's the best advice I can give you. And it is an option because of the free money the sports books give away. You can win right away. There's another, so bonuses are kind of seen as like the low hanging fruit of sports betting. It's like, it's like uh, being like a bonus grinder is like the same thing as being like a points bet trader. You're like bottom totem pole for, you know, whatever sports betting thing that you're doing. Now, I disagree. I think it is. But I also think on the very highest level, it becomes incredibly relevant when you talk about special VIP deals, negotiated, you know, bonuses, working with um, people who can get very attractive vip level bonuses from a casino so they might be like a a high roller and you want to work with them and figure out like oh can we negotiate a loss back the, the biggest one of the biggest uh gambling wins of all time was don johnson negotiating loss backs in uh atlantic city blackjack and he won like 16 million dollars so bonuses are always should be part of your arsenal it's just like the higher you move up the more they become a negotiation game instead of a hey like we click here and we sign up you know and it's as easy as that so right away bonuses number one if you can't win just do bonuses number two top-down betting okay so what is top-down betting it's basically when you don't really have an opinion about a game um you're just using market information to make a bet on a game that's off market what does that mean simple as you know the lakers are playing the clippers and the lakers are you know plus three everywhere and then you see a site that has lakers plus seven and there's no injury news so you just take the plus seven that's a very 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 simplistic um def you know definition of top-down betting but there's nuances to it there's different styles i mean arbitrage betting is probably the biggest um or at least getting the most attention especially on social media you have our you know odds jam doing a lot of arbitrage promotion but arbitrage is like you just take the same side different side of the same bet and the prices are so different that you take both sides of the same wager and you make money no matter what happens uh it's, it's, could be like a money line where it's like plus 105 uh you know one book on the Lakers and plus 105 on the Clippers on another book and you just take both and no matter what happens you're gonna win money no matter who wins the game that's arbitrage betting um it's not you know it's for certain for a lot of reasons it's not necessarily good for your account health um you're also usually better off not taking one side knowing which is the sharp side and which is not and that's what people kind of call plus EV betting it's such a weird term but it would basically be like if you have one book that's the sharp book, let's say it's uh, you know circus sports, and then you have DraftKings, and you know you have you're betting the Lakers on DraftKings, and then you're deciding should I bet the Clippers on Circa or not? Usually, um, you're probably better off just taking the DraftKings side because betting into the sharp book uh, in that situation, they're usually more correct on their lines, so you might be losing money on that side to protect you from having any risk in general sometimes it's worth it to pay to pay to de-risk there but other times you know you want to just take the bet that's winning you money so in reality it could be like you know the DraftKings side is winning you five percent the circus side is losing you two percent so you're making like three percent um on the arb whereas if you bet just the DraftKings side you'd be making five percent but it'd be much riskier so that would be plus ev betting and then steam chasing is Oh, I skipped live arbitrage. Live arbitrage is the same as arbitrage, except for you're doing it when the game is already kicked off. Um, this is something that is very software heavy. Uh, I know you have odds polls, odds jam, probably a bunch of others that do this, but during the live market, it seems that things cross into arbitrage more frequently just because there's not as much... Um, betting to keep it in check and like a lot of times you have there a lot of the pricing is dependent on on game state information and certain 
books might not update as quickly and they have different live models and whatever. So there's a lot of arbitrage opportunities that come up live. Uh, I know people have had some success, but again, just with kind of all of these, it's not great for your account health at recreational books, but it makes you money. And if you don't have a bankroll yet, then this is a great way to build a bankroll. And if somebody says like, oh, you're doing, you know, you're doing the low brow like betting, like they can go fuck themselves. Like you do it, go make money, who cares? And then steam chasing is going to be the fourth one, which is basically, let's say that Lakers Clippers, you see Lakers plus three everywhere, and then you see a move to plus two at some sharp books, and you see a plus three still left on DraftKings or Bet Rivers, you would just go bet the plus three because you're assuming that the line moved from plus three to plus two because someone smart came and bet plus three at the sharp book. Those are the key top down betting buckets and then they have sub buckets basically which is like derivatives where you have like a full game line that's not properly or you have a quarter line or a half line that's not um properly derived from the full game line like a full game line can move but the half you know the half line or the quarter line doesn't move and that's like steam chasing or some type of derivative pricing that that you can you know if you understand how much a point is worth or how much a run is worth in baseball or whatever it is you can start doing some derivative pricing i would say that kind of starts to be bottom up but again this is what i'm saying like you don't just do one thing do multiple things mm -hmm. right and speaking of bottom up bottom mm -hmm. up <laughs> don't know why we have <laughs> picture of cam smith here because he's like one of the golfers i bet against the most but i guess that's bottom up right as why i bet against cam smith really it's because he you know he doesn't practice anymore and that's the ultimate um sports plus data knowledge uh when i bottom up is basically this if you would make a bet into a market when every single sports book on the market is the same price then you have now, I'm not saying you have to, but if your strategy would have you make a bet, sometimes in those situations, it's a bottom-up strategy. Top-down strategies rely on price differential across books. A bottom-up strategy could and should incorporate market data, but it doesn't have to bet into um, a market that has price discrepancies because you're pricing your fair value. A lot of the time, it's going to be, or it is going to be priced through your own uh, analytics process, whether it's you have a model plus your own subjective adjustments, whatever it is, you use that to get to a fair. And then you might regress it to the market a little bit. However, if you want to do that, that's totally fine. Uh, usually you want to regress more towards the sharp books, but you know, I'm not necessarily here. If you really want to learn how to bottom up bet, GP Academy, I'm currently building a NASCAR model live in the class and i've made a lot of videos on bottom-up betting in there but for just the sake of kind of going over it this is the most i would say the most advanced um part the most advanced um strategy the hardest to learn takes the most time to implement because you know you're basically trying to be a lines maker now you're not because you're not market making you're not putting all your numbers up there and offering you're just trying to find something useful enough to, to go snipe fair values from sports books i would break bottom up betters kind of into two camps i think you should have both but you could call them like the data analysts and these are going to be very model driven um you know crunching a lot of history, you know, building historic databases and using those data databases to train models that you know predict the future somewhat accurately or somewhat more accurately than the sportsbooks models. And then you would have like what I would call more the handicappers. Again, a handicapper could be a data scientist, but it's like handicapper is going to have very sports specific knowledge and might be able to subjectively adjust numbers in a way that the market can't in a way that a, a data analyst or like someone who's using a pure model-based approach can't now realistically you want to have inputs in your model that you're adjusting subjectively i think the best version of this is both 
and you allow someone to subjectively tweak a couple, you know, team strength um, ratings or something like that in the model, instead of like trying to come up with a adjustment expressed in odds, because it's really easy to express something in terms of probability when you have a model and it's less easy as just like a human trying to subjectively put a probability on something. So I think they both work well together and the best to do it have the best to do it have both subjective and quantitative. But yeah, that's bottom up betting. This is like what Billy Walters does, right? And this is like I think what we all think of sports betting when we first hear about it is like somebody who just, you know, has the winners, right? It's like nobody has the winners, but you know, if you're thinking about actually predicting um outcomes based on the game data instead of the market data, that's bottom up betting. Monetize, give accounts. So let's say you specialize in one sport and you don't, you know, your sport's out off season. All of a sudden you have like this whole network of trying to get bets down on your sport, but you don't necessarily have any bets coming in because your sport's off season. Now you partner with someone and they send, you know, let's say you have you know, your NFL and their NBA or whatever. The NFL season ends, NBA is going on, and you just start, you know, doing a profit share. You know, you bet for them and they give you their info and then maybe you trade your info when NFL season's on. And this is like just a good way to keep your ecosystem that you built um, healthy in the off season, right? trading information with sharps and betting for other sharps in sports that you might not be sharp at. This is why I think specialization also is really helpful because if you're good at one sport, if you get really good at one sport, you can trade info with other people and other sports. But if you're mediocre at like, if you're like, okay, at four sports, no one's going to really care too much about your info. Whereas like, if you have great info in one sport, all of a sudden it becomes really valuable and you can start to use that to get info in other sports and then become great at four sports instead of good on your own at four. So yeah, this is just basically, um, you know, if you're on an off season, partner up with somebody and get some bets from them. Don't let that account sit vacant. Soft PVP. This is the fifth. And this is um, this is kind of a unique one because I've really kind of gotten more into this this year. But I'll tell you a story about a friend of mine who he I, I know that like he's a great better and he can get into so many soft March Madness pools, Calcutta's. He gets heads up season long fantasy contests against like these massive whales millions and millions of dollars put into action in the softest like March Madness pools and in this stuff around. And your ROI in these, it's like absolutely massive. Now this takes hustle and a lot of legwork, but you know, if you can get into some of these recreational pools that are high stakes, they become really, really valuable. As of right now, we've gotten through this through my friend you know kind of partnered up with him to get into some uh golf pools and that's been i think here it is like i think we're up about like a hundred thousand in those and it's not too like we built a calcutta model and it wasn't like that complicated i actually have the calcutta model in gp academy shout out um but yeah the hourly is just insane because we don't have to spend that much time we have a golf model it's already works we plug it in and everybody's terrible in these pools and you just print money um but this is the most networking heavy it's just like don't sleep on these you know there's the best ap's the best sports bettors are creative and they find weak opponents they're not necessarily the best modelers they're not necessarily the best handicappers the people who make the most most money in this, the best APs, the best sports bettors, they cross the board find weak opponents more than other people. They get the most amount of money down against soft opponents. Who you're betting against matters more 
than who you are as a vet. And, you know, so if you hear about somebody who's like, oh, I heard about this, like, I stakes March Madness pool, I would probably ask more about that. You know, sometimes like this comes hard to a lot of us because we got into gambling because we were a little more reserved or introverted. This is where you can really make money as an extrovert in this industry or just like suck it up and like act with some extroverted tendencies for a while and get into some of the, get into some of these pools. And the other thing is if you specialize in college basketball, you know, you're already probably figured figured out like you need to do March Madness pools. But if you don't, I mean you gotta and you should probably partner up with people who might help you get into those pools who can't necessarily price the tournament um easily. I think that's where we did well with golf is we could you know price calcutta pretty simply so we were a natural fit for somebody who could get into some of these soft bigger um calcuttas so yeah anyway this is number five and i think it's it's also important like it's it's gonna be a non um it's it's a it's a meaningful part of our earnings this year is you know soft pvp and this doesn't even include like playing pick six on DraftKings. If you want playing um, you know, DFS, now it's a little different. You have to you have to be very good at lineup construction and you have to probably partner with somebody who knows how to do that. But again, think outside the box. There's always good opportunities to make money against soft opponents, but sometimes they require legwork and a lot of people don't want to do them. They want to just pretend that this is a game that's won on VS code, but the reality is this is a game, it's a people game at the end of the day. And it's won it's won a little bit everywhere. It's won some of it's won on VS Code and some of it's won, you know, watching the sport and making contacts and watching the market. It's it's won everywhere. So if you take away one thing from this this uh episode, it's there's many skills and many avenues in this game to make money, and they all can kind of work together. And as you build, I would try and start adding, adding all five. So I hope that's useful. I wanted to do a little more educational episode this time where we really just got down to, down to making money. And yeah, if you listen this far, please consider GP Academy. I think a lot of the lessons in here are extrapolated on. You know, we make sure we're going over all five of these in there. And I think it's the only place that really teaches you to be a complete sports better and that's in my opinion what's needed for longevity so if you're very serious about this um reach out to me and you know ask some questions or whatever you know whatever questions you have please feel free to ask and then you know i hope hope you give it a try all right everyone thanks for listening watching and i will see you on the next episode